Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel, and welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks, a podcast that talks about how to make money, how to keep it, how to invest it, and how to do it with a team. So we're excited today to talk about a great teammate. Rob's been a partner of mine, been part of our community, helped tons and tons of people. I call him our uh, alternative financial planner. He's not officially a planner, but knows the alternative space, knows life insurance, not death insurance. So we're going to have a big conversation with Rob in our podcast today. And a couple of places I want you listening for is how insurance is a big piece. Actually, I think it's the most critical piece right next to the trust, to funding the trust with insurance. Insurance is a great uh, investment vehicle. I don't think enough people take advantage of it. And things also that you need to do to diversify your portfolio. So just uh, be listening from that perspective. And if you are international, there are very similar conversations in your country. And you are always welcome to go to asklaurel.com. That's A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L. Asklaurel.com, ask a question, uh, make a request of another expert or team member in a different country if that's where you're listening from. So with that, uh, Rob Cole, welcome to Laurel's Real Money Talks. Good morning, Laurel. I'm happy to be here. So Rob, talk a little bit about who you are, what you do, how you've arrived here, with some background. Sure, Laurel. I, I've been in the financial industry for 20-plus uh, years. I've run, run several different agencies. I've been securities licensed in the past. And in most of my lifetime, helping people find strategies to create wealth and lower their taxes. I've worked with a group called the Independent Excellent Group, which is a national group that we get together on a quarterly basis to really kind of find out different strategies that we can apply to help the upper end clients to lower taxes, make more money, and overall just have a much bigger flow of income in their later years. Mm, I love all that. So when you're talking about, like I said, let's start with lowering taxes, right? Let's just talk about uh, each of these things from lowering taxes, being the, in the market and other people's money. It's just going to go one by one. Sure. Well, when it comes to taxes, most people, you know, the general idea for most people is to go to work, get a W-2 job and fill up a bunch of money in their 401k. The idea of later being in a lower tax bracket and consequently paying less taxes when they're in retirement. However, that was good in the 70s, right? When taxes were really high. We're talking about 70% for the highest tax bracket. And that worked out pretty good 20 years later when they were down to about a 25% tax bracket. But in today, believe it or not, we're in some of the lowest taxes there is right now. We're in about a 39% high tax bracket right now. Average in a lifetime or since the taxes have been there, the high tax bracket, it's 58%, believe it or not. So people who think that they're going to be in a lower tax bracket now when they go to retire are just fooling themselves. First of all, we're in a low tax bracket now. And secondly, we're $22 trillion in debt, Laurel. It is just amazing to me what this country is going to do to try to resolve that huge issue. You know, I was listening to somebody the other day. They were saying a trillion dollars, or a trillion seconds, to try to get somebody to understand what a trillion dollars is. A trillion seconds is like 33,000 years. What? Can you believe that? I mean, yeah, it's an amazing amount of time. So, Say that again. A, a, a trillion seconds like is what? About 33,000 years. It's before Christ. You went back a thousand years, way before Christ. Oh my God! Can you, can, people just can't wrap their heads around what what a trillion really is, and we're twenty two trillion dollars in debt. So the idea that people are going to be in a lower tax bracket ten, fifteen, and twenty years from now is really hard to believe. That's going to be not even start to talk about Medicare and all the other things that um, our government is now paying for. We won't even get into politics of it all, but I think you all understand what might be coming here soon. So what can people do about it? So, I mean, I think the tax is, is a huge, huge, I mean, we know it's a huge piece. And I want you to kind of loop in the qualified plans and how that relates to 
you know, our conversation as well. So, I mean, there were days, right, where our tax rate was 18, 20%, or I mean, I'm sorry, interest rates were. So, with the potential of interest rates being able to recover some of this and the amount of taxes, I mean, what's the answer? Give us some solutions. Well, well let's, let's understand what people really are currently doing. They're putting money in their 401k. And they're doing it because they've always been told, put it in the 401k and defer those taxes to later. But I always like to say, think about it this way. Think about postponing the tax. When you put your money in 401k, you get a tax break now. However, you're putting a loan with the IRS, a loan with the IRS, get this, to pay them back later. At what amount, you have no clue because we don't know what that interest rate is, i.e. the tax bracket we're going to be in. So it's misconception on what that can be. Now, some things have come up here lately that some people have started using, like the Roth IRA. Now, the Roth IRA is kind of reverse, you know, where we, we pay the tax up front, and then we never have to pay taxes on the gain. And that's when you start to think about it, that's a great way to go. I mean, it really makes a lot of sense. However, the only problem with the Roth IRA, unfortunately, is that depending on your age, you only can put about 5500 or 6500 into it a year. There's no way to really create the wealth that most people want to create in a tax-free environment with the Roth IRA. You just can't put enough money into it. And also, if you make too much money, you can't even participate in the Roth IRA. So that's, that's kind of out the door, too. But what we want to do is kind of look at the IRS tax code and see what other little nuggets are out there. Because remember, a 401k is just the tax code itself, the section 401k, and that's where it comes to. So what we have to do is kind of look through the, the tax code and find some other things that we can do. So that's one of the things we want to focus on. And some of the other things we have to think about is not losing our money, right? There was a great man that once said, rule number one is not lose money. Rule number two is revert to rule number one. And that was Warren Buffett, right? Yep. So. Now, you know, you got to say he's pretty smart when it comes to that. So we're putting our money so much in risk sometimes in the stock market, right? What crazy week we've had just this week. It's been up and down and all the way around, right? So just some quick, uh, uh, quick data on that. And from 2000 to 2018, 18 years of a lifetime, people put money at risk with the stock market. You know what rate of return they got? We got four and a half percent about. That's in the S and P 500. 18 years, and that's all you're left with. It's uh, astounding to me to see what people do with their money and put their money at risk, and then at the end of the day, they still have to pay all that tax on it because they put it all in their 401k. Interesting. So, so tell me about how, what's your opinion of a 401k? I mean, I know there's a variety of other like we're huge fans of solo 401ks and you know, more for the entrepreneur, but. In general, a lot of people that listen are employed and they've had 401ks. What's your? Well, my opinion is this. Now, solo 401k is a different animal. One, because A, you don't have to invest in the stock market when you have a solo 401k. B, also with a solo 401k, you can borrow your money out and make other investments. So, i.e., you can get, get a access to your money through a loan to make other investments to keep outside of your 401k. So, some of those strategies do make some good sense involved in if you can do that. And if you work for an employer that has a Roth 401k, that's a great place to go ahead and do it, do as well. But moving forward, the 401k has some issues. One is we probably are going to be in a higher tax burden, which is the worst thing to be at. But then we have to wait till we're 59 and a half to get our money. You know, we get hit with a penalty. And then a lot of people, a lot of my clients are older too. That, and they don't even want to access that money because they don't want to pay the taxes. They just want to leave it for the kids. But at 70 and a half, they have to start pulling the money out. Laurel, do you know what the penalty is at 70 and a half? You don't take the money out? No, actually. What is it? Taking it out early prior to 59 and a half is only 10%. But at 70 and a half, if you do not take what they call a required minimum distribution, it's 50%. Just imagine you forget. Because you guess what? The IRS doesn't say, hey, send me your RMD. They don't send you a card. It's your responsibility. Forget about it. Heck, I forget what I had for lunch, let alone what, you know, (laughs) that is. We wait till I'm 70 and a half. Who knows, right? Our memory's not where it used to be. And if you forget about it, too bad, so sad. They're going to hit you with a 50% penalty. 
So who needs that? So there's a lot of other strings to a 401k. So we like to look for other strategies that allow us to be a lot more flexible when it comes to that. You know, Gloria, you, you mentioned lots of times in your book about uh, using other people's money. Why do you like that strategy so much? What's some of the advantages? I know you talk about in your books and everything. It's a great program. Well, when you know how to use OPM, right, other people's money, which, you know, has been talked about in, in many, many books and many people say they know how to do it. OPM is just is a way to grow, expand, especially if you use it in a debt format, uh, in some sort of a debt structure. You know, I have done land deals where I've done a 10% note, leveraged, you know, leaned against the land, first position, double, tripled the land, sold it out, used other people's money 100% to make myself and partner's money. So OPM can be used and is used so strategically by the wealthy. Right, because you're not putting up your money at risk. You're actually taking a loan usually from, from like a bank or some other entity where you take other people's money, then you make a spread on that money. Right now, interest rates are pretty low, four and a half, five percent somewhere around that, that area. Just imagine if you can make a spread on that money, why in the heck would you put 100% of your own cash into an investment or into a house or to a rental property when you can get that cash at a, such a low discount? And guess what? You're protecting your asset because they're on the hook, right? I mean, because it's their money that's in there. Yes, you might have signed up something, but remember in the 2007-2008 era when people you know, walked away from the houses. Yes, they got bad credit, but guess what? They didn't lose 100% of the money because they didn't put 100% down on the house. So there's some tremendous advantages to that. So what I like to look at, Laurel, is look at a strategy that we can put all three of those things together. That means lowering our taxes for later, means tax-free income. I mean, who doesn't want a tax-free retirement plan? I mean, that just sounds good, Right. right? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, we're, when you're retired, I don't want to say you're on a fixed income, but, but you, a lot of people, they're not, you know, they're having fun. They don't want to work any longer, right? But their income is just coming in and nothing better than tax-free income, right? And then what if we could put it in some place where we're not, I don't know, have the ups and downs of the stock market. We don't have to worry about that stuff and still, still make a decent rate of return, meaning I can have the all upside of the market, but none of the downside. So there's a specific strategy we use in that to make that happen. And thirdly, what if we could use other people's money if we wanted to have access to our cash, i.e. we get a loan against our money, so our money stays in our, our tank or stays in our account, and we're making 7 8 9% in, and we only have to pay a 4 or 5% loan. So what we want to do is incorporate those three things. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Part of what I want you to add into it too, Rob, is just the conversation of when do you start? You know, there's so many people in their 20s and 30s that just think it's a later life thing. So put it together as a combination of that, but also what when you start, because the earlier you start, the better this you know strategy gets. Right. It's just like anything else. Start now. You know, the the killer to any great sound financial plan, you know what that is? It's called procrastination. So many people want to think about things. So many things want to mold over. So many things. You know what I like about you, Laurel? When I first started talking to you about this type of strategy, you listened to it. You took a quick look at it. It made sense, and you just moved on it, and it's worked so well for you. But so many people get so caught up. And worrying about things because they never heard it before. I'm not saying don't do you do your due diligence, but keep the momentum going. When I start working with people and they like this strategy, we're going through it and everything's going. As soon as they start pushing it off, well, get a hold of me in a couple of weeks or three weeks from here, this week. You know what? Ninety percent of them never take action. But the people who just keeps on moving, yeah, let's meet next week. Let's meet next week. Next week. The thing's done in three or four weeks. Everybody got the information they needed, and now they have a plan that started. Because if you lose 10 years, man, the compounding interest just goes away, never to be recaptured ever again. So start now, start early. So everybody comes to this type of strategy at different time frames. Obviously, it'd be great if I worked with everybody that's 26, 27. But to be honest with you, it's not really listening to somebody like us at that time. 
most of the people we're talking to are like in their 50s and, and early 60s, which is still a good time to do it, but they have to start quick, right? We can't, we can't afford to wait another four or five years at that time. So the question comes, right, Laurel, what's everybody asking about right now? What the heck is this? All right. Yep. <laughs> well, it's something that's been on the books for a long time. It's only the wealthy has been using it for a, a great deal amount of time. And also they use the tax code in their favor, right? There's a lot of tax code out there, but there's a section called 7702. And it talks about, believe it or not, this type of strategy is in life insurance. Now, this is not your mom and dad's old life insurance. This is not about the death benefit play. Now, life insurance definitely has a death benefit, and it is a benefit of the policy. However, what most people don't understand is the tax advantages if we set it up correctly. So what we do is 180 degrees what most people do with life insurance, right? Most people want to buy, pay the least amount of life for life insurance and get the maximum death benefit. Makes sense. You know, you need a lot of life insurance for your kids or your family. Not a problem. That's the way we should do that. However, if we're going to use this as a tax play, we want to do it in the reverse. Meaning we want to buy the least amount of life insurance, Laurel, and put the most money in. So what that does is allow us to compoundly have a lot of what they call cash value that gets bigger and bigger and bigger over a period of time. That way, later, we can access that cash, which we don't even have to be 59 and a half, and we can go ahead and take a loan against it. Again, why do we want to take a loan? Well, because if you take a withdrawal from it, you lose a compounding of interest and there's not as much money working for you, right? But if we take a loan, what happens? If we're making seven, eight, nine percent on these type of programs and they're going to charge us four or five percent, why wouldn't they take a loan? There's a spread. Right, because we're using other people's money, the life insurance company's money, not our money, yep. the life insurance company. So keep going. Explain the details of that, because I think so many people are just unaware. Like, I mean, most financial conversations are unaware of, but this one is so, I'm gonna say, sweet. It is just so good, and people do not know about it. Well, what I like about this is if you're younger, right, say in your 40s, and you start one of these plans. It, during the accumulation, meaning we're putting money inside one of these programs, we have the ability to access that cash prior to 59 and a half, unlike your 401k and your IRAs. We can access that cash without getting hit with that IRS penalty, right? So what I like is for people to think about, it, think of this as your wealth account, right? I know you write about a lot in your books, uh, Laura, about having a wealth yeah. account. Well, this is a wealth account just kind of on steroids. That means that when you put the money into this and we Use the money to make other investments later and then put the money back in. It's like your home base. Instead of using a savings account that's going to pay you, what, 1%, why not put it in something like this that's kind of gives you a, a good rate of return, can't lose any money, and compounds over and over and over again. So later, we'll have tremendous amount of income that's totally tax-free. So we can access that money while we're in the accumulation years. But when we go to, I know you don't like that word retirement. We'll just say, you know, the financial freedom days of our lives, right? We want to have tax-free income. And that's what we want to set this thing up. So the idea, once again, is not to buy a bunch of life insurance debt benefit. Yes, it's nice for the family and, and people need that. But the idea is just to jam a lot of money into this thing. So we can get the tremendous tax advantages and also the compounding of interest on this money so we can have it for later. Talk a little bit about the, I'm just going to go like the expenses. People hear this and they believe there's a lot of expense to set it up. This is only for the strategy of the wealthy. You know, who's this appropriate for and, you know, what are the fees all around this? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because... So this is really what, what we consider the, like the top 25 percenters. Now, I know, Laurel, you and I have talked about it when we're in together in some of the groups and everything. What is the top 25 percent earners in America? And believe it or not, jointly, jointly across America, the adjusted gross income to be in the top 25 percenters is only $80,000. So if you're in that 
or above of income, you still are getting by, but you're starting to have a tax problem, not an income problem. So we got to fix that. So anybody that's probably over $80,000 a year of income with, and, and all that kind of stuff, they need to start looking at this program so they can start putting money away on an ongoing basis and have that work, work for them. Now, the expenses. I'm glad you brought that up, too. Because a lot of times we hear that it's expensive. So expenses is compared to what? You know this, Laurel. Most uh, financial advisors, they charge 1% to 2% of manager money. Then sometimes they, they put that right into a mutual fund that charges you another half a percent. And also as your money grows in those accounts, those expenses just get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Just because there's more money. Well, life insurance works completely opposite. It's really interesting how it works because most people think life insurance is most expensive at the end. Not necessarily, but most of them in these type of cash value type of life insurance, the expenses are on the front end. The more expensive the first 10 years or so, and then the expenses drop off. So when I look at these things and I, I run an expense analysis on it for my clients, they're somewhere right around 1% or less for the lifetime of they have this investment. And what do they get for that? They have a guarantee not to lose money in the market, which their money manager can't give them. Second of all, they allow them tax-free income. And taxes are the real proponent that charges you a big expense, right? If we can wipe that out by just paying 1%, that's a pretty good deal. So it's really not that expensive when we start to look at it because we're saving a lot of money in taxes. So we've talked about it. We start now. I mean, the compounding power of this is extraordinary. We talked about the cash flow benefits, the lending benefits, using other people's money just to grow. Talk a little bit about the kind of levels of investment. Like a lot of times, you know, I hear somebody say, well, I have to go think about it. It's my favorite financial excuse. <laughs> when people are thinking about it, how would you answer that question? Is it right? So meaning they may say, well, do I do this or do I do real estate or I do something else? Like to me, this is a category, a foundational category of its own. So how do you respond to people who really need to see this as an asset class, as an investment vehicle? And there isn't really a comparison because of the, the power of it. Like for somebody to say it's this versus real estate, or I'm saying it's an and, how do you respond to that? Well, I look at money in three different colors, right? One is red money. That's money that you put, most people put in the stock market. That's where 95% of most investors put their money because it's all tied up in their 401k and they put it in the stock market. So I classify, put that color red. Who knows what's going to happen Tomorrow, somebody tweets something out there, or, or we have somebody decides to lob up a few missiles somewhere else, or China, there's a different trade war. I mean, every day it's headline driven. We just don't know what's going to happen in the stock market from day to day. And then there's blue money, which you know a lot about blue money in your community, Laurel, is a lot of alternative investments that doesn't have any correlation with the stock market, right? That has its own risk and rewards. Meaning, yes, I don't have to worry about the stock market headlines any longer. I could be real estate, could be gas and oil, could be gold and silver, could be lots of things. It's just not tied up to stock market. That doesn't necessarily mean you can't lose money in those because you can. You have to understand those risks and mitigate the risk, right? That's okay. Investments come with risk. But then there's a third color money, which is green money. And that's what we're talking about here. This is guaranteed money by large insurance companies. And the reason why we call it green is because insurance companies are different than any other companies that are out there. By law, they have to put so much money in reserve. In case there's ever a run on, on money, they are going to be the best place to have your money at because nobody else is going to have that money. So life insurance companies are what we consider in the green section because the guarantees yeah. that they give you and also all the money they have to put in reserve. So that's kind of how we look at the how it works and where this should be. And again, when we're looking at investments, I think about green money, I, uh, life insurance, or I'm not here to talk about annuities, but places where we can put money that's guaranteed. It's like building your, your financial house. The first thing you yeah. want to make sure of in a house is a solid foundation. And that's where we look at the start. Awesome. So I want to have you expand just on kind of one last question. I know you have an ebook that people can uh, email you in for. 
So clearly insurance is the green money, but go ahead and explain a little bit about the red and blue money as well. Well, again, the red is, is tied up in the stock market. Now, when we're looking at other investments, whether it's red or blue, red being in the stock market, we want to have certain strategies that mitigate risk, right? If we're going to take on a, a risk, we want to mitigate as much as possible. And I know in your world, we look at iFlip for that strategy to kind of mitigate the risk of going up and down to the stock market. And that's great. I, I love mitigating risk. Right. So that's a great play to put that money at. And then the blue money is, you know, alternative investing. And so this could be like gas and oil, which you, you talk a lot about the tax advantages inside of that. There also could be other plays like in promissory notes and other things that you hear throughout your community that gives us ways that we can mitigate risk on. And that's what I like. And then again, the green is the protection of all. But I wanted to share with you real briefly, because I know we're running short on time here, Lowell. It's just, if a person, I'm looking at an illustration I just ran for a client the other day, a 40-year-old client just put $500 a month away, put it away just for, for uh, about 20 years. And I'm just pulling it up here. And then at age 66, they're going to start pulling out 40, 000, over $40,000 a year, tax-free. I mean, that's just an incredible amount of money that they're they're pulling out, putting in $6,000 a year, then they're pulling out $41,000 a year to age 90. So if we ran the numbers out, they would have put in just about $154,000 into this program over a 25-year period of time. They would have got $990,000 tax-free to age 90. You know, tax free. And there would still be a death benefit to the family of about $285,000. So for $154,000, this person, by illustration, would have had uh, over a million dollars that would have went to them and their family, totally tax free. So it doesn't always necessarily come with a huge cost. So I have clients from, from putting the $500 a month away to putting, as you know, 100000 or more a year away into these type of programs. It just depends on the individual. What I look for, for, to be honest with you, for the most part, Laurel, is I look at the 401k, how much money they're putting in their 401k, and then are they getting matching dollars? If they're not getting matching dollars, maybe we should reallocate those monies into instead of taxable plan later to a tax-free plan later. And that's where we look at finding money. Because it's not about pointing people money out of their lifestyle. It's about finding yep. money that they may not be leveraging properly. And there's a lot of it. So, Rob, I'm going to talk a little bit about your ebook. I'll have you talk about what's in the ebook, uh, how do they get it. And, again, at any time, if you want to ask for a personal you know, one-on-one or a conversation, get an assessment, you can always go to Ask Laurel, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L, AskLaurel.com. Say, I love the podcast with Rob. I would like to, you know, explore working with him directly. You can always do that. But talk about your ebook, Rob, and uh, what's involved in that. Well, the ebook I have tells you pinpoint the strategy that we're talking about today. So what's great about it is that it really anchors the strategy and teaches you how to do it. But there's a kicker of this, Laurel. It has to be set up properly. You have to be working with the right people, with the right clients. Because you, you can read this strategy, and you could go to the wrong company. You can go to the wrong agent. And I they want to be close to what I'm talking about. So we first of all, we have to be working with a, an advisor like myself that's independent. I Meaning we don't work for companies. We work for our clients, right? So we can go out and find the best companies that are out there. And they change from year to year. And secondly, we have to make sure the strategy is done properly at the beginning. So many people are in this, in this thing for commissions. And what they do is they put a bunch of death benefit in it. They don't have it where it has increasing death benefit. There's a lot of different things we got to know about how putting this together. And if you're not working with somebody that's been doing this for many, many years, you could just fall into having a mediocre plan. So, however... If they go, you know, they go ahead and email me, I will send them one of those ebooks. And my email address is rcold. My last name is K-O-L, B as in boy, at go, green as in the color, F as in financial, S as in services.com. So it's rcold, K-O-L-B, 
at gogreenfs.com. They go ahead and shoot me over an email that they heard me in the podcast. I will shoot over that free to them. And if they are interested, I'll set up another one-on-one call and see if it's the right way a uh, program for them and, or at least give them share some more information with them. That'd be awesome. Rob, I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. And again, yeah, like all of you out there, I do a lot of this with Rob and also will be working with him directly in the next uh, little while. So always reset and realign. And even if you have some of the products that you think Rob offers, I would still encourage you to take a look, evaluate, and assess them uh, against each other. So, Rob, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here and excited to work with all your group. There's such a fantastic community. I've been doing it with over five years with you, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you and all the community. Awesome. So thank you, Rob, and all of you listening. Again, uh, go to asklaurel.com to ask any questions. We're going to be having one of those uh, monthly webinars coming up where I go through very strategically answer groups of questions and topics questions just so we keep this conversation about money, business, and finance moving. And we'll be back with another episode next week. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week.